shall I play my free hit or shall I take a minus eight? Here's my team selection ahead of Blank Game Week 29. Let's get into it. Yo, listen up, Rue is stepping up the game. Where fantasy premier league runs in his veins. From transfers to captains, he's always on top. Guiding you through every game week nonstop. They say Rue got that style of flow. Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show. Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe. If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe. Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Rue, and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to be going through my team selection ahead of Blank Game Week 29. But first of all, I just wanted to go through my team currently, how many points is scored in Game Week 28. Obviously, the Game Week isn't finished yet. So there's going to be hopefully a lot of changes because um, the score is not looking too great at the minute. But um, there still are some fixtures left. Chelsea, uh, Newcastle are still to play. Also, the Luton and Bournemouth double Game Week is still... Um, they're both still to play each other in their second game of the double game week. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe. It helps me out a lot and you get the help, the tips, etc. to help you win your mini leagues and climb the ranks. And yeah, smash a like on this video if you do end up liking it. So first of all, I just wanted to go through what I've scored so far in game week 28. And like I said, it's not been a great game week. Um, the red arrow hasn't been massive yet. It's about 30k. So I'm on about 270k um, overall which to me, I'm I'm actually not mad at because I am not playing my free hit, I think, um, unless it, something crazy happens. But at this current moment, I'm not playing my free hit in game at 29. So that means that I am expecting a few red arrows in these game weeks, pre and post game week 29. Um, but it's not been too, too bad, especially with the fact that Palmer, Solan uh, Solanke, Morris, Doughty and Smith have still got a game. Obviously, apart from that, all blanks apart from Hyun Min Son, who got 17 points and kind of carrying my team. I did end up taking a minus eight. So um, it was Senesi out for Smith and it was, um, I did take out Foden for Bowen and brought in Morris for Haaland. So Bowen and Morris have ended up, have matched Foden and Haaland, but obviously I've taken a minus four for basically one of them or, or both of them. It depends how what way you want to look at it. And then last minute, literally one minute to go, I took out um I took who did I take out? I took out Senesi and brought in Smith for a minus four. And that meant I wasn't going to play a Stupinan, who ended up getting six points, which was a bit it was a bit annoying because now Smith has got to get 10 points for me to to kind of get that back. But um yeah, it's just one of them things. And he can still get 10 points, don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, a little bit annoying there. But overall, pretty, pretty terrible game week. But it's not over. Let's get into game week 29. So for game week 29, before I showed you my whole team, I'm going to talk about what transfers I am looking to make. So first of all, I guess the transfer I'm 100% I'm going to be making is Saka to Madison, which to a lot of people does sound a little bit, a little bit out there, but I'm not playing my free hit in this game week, which means I'm probably going to wild card in game week 31. Obviously, Saka is a great player. He did blank this game week, but he's been a great player this season. Um, he scored 13 goals and got 10 assists. And I've had him, yeah, for, for I think the whole season I've had him. So I've got all them goals, all them assists. However, Arsenal blank in game week 29, and then they play Man City away in game week um, 30. So I think I can go without Saka for that period. And then Madison obviously has a game in 29, Fulham away, and then Spurs play Luton at home in game week 30. So for me, Madison's got two fixtures, trip hit two fixtures, um, and then they're against Fulham and Luton, whereas Saka's only got one against Man City. So for me, it is definitely worth it to bring in Madison. And he's actually been on um, pretty good form since he's come back from from injury again he's not known for his goal scoring form but he did actually get on a score sheet in Spurs' game against Aston Villa in game week 28 um but this so far this season obviously he had that big injury but he started 17 four goals nine assists so 13 returns in 17 games is pretty good to me and I think he can do damage in this Fulham away game and in a Luton at home game in game week 30. Solanke will probably be coming out as well um, to be honest, it, it's just because my other two strikers are playing. Um, I won't go into who they are until later on in the video, but um, Solanke probably will come out because of the blank. Yes, he has got a good fixture, Everton at home, and then he's got Palace at home, and then Luton away. So some really nice fixtures there for Solanke. But for me, um, 
I actually do think that Tony can outscore him in this game week and potentially the next game week as well. So Tony has Burnley away. Obviously, that's a that's a bonus anyway. No matter what what um Tony does, if he gets one goal, it's still going to be above what Solanke scored. And then after that, um. Tony has Man United at home, which I think is still a good game for him. And Solanke has Everton at home. Everton are not too bad defensively. I know they lost against Man United in game week 28, but Everton defensively have been pretty okay this season. So I'm not too worried about Solanke there. And then my next transfer will be Estupinan. Again, a player with not a fixture for Pedro Porro with Fulham away. This one I'm not too sure about because um, I don't love Spurs' defence. I've, I've been quite open about that. Obviously, they did keep a clean sheet against Aston Villa, but um, it, to be honest, it's a rare thing to see Spurs keep a clean sheet. However, Pedro Porro, we know how attacking he can be. Um, I think can get an assist or a goal and couple that up with a clean sheet. If they do get one, it could be an absolute mega haul. I am a bit unsure though, because I don't really like taking a minus four for a defender. Um, because I think it just leaves you too much. But the fact that I'm not going to have any other defenders and and I'm going to be down to basically ten men. Um, that I actually do think it is worth it in this case. And the fact that obviously Spurs have Luton at home, like I said, in game week 30, um, and I'm going to be struggling for defenders because obviously Man City do play Arsenal, as I've mentioned. So I think it is a good kind of two-week two week option for me. I, I think that four points can be worth it over them two weeks. But these are going to, likely going to be my transfers. We'll go into what the team selection will look like with these players in the team. So in my game week 29 team, does look like this. So I have managed to get out a full uh, goalkeeper and a full defensive line. Ariola, I, I think definitely will start. Um, Ever Aston Villa at home is not the best fixture, but Villa have just got slapped 4 0 by Spurs. They're going to have Europa League or call Europa Conference League, but so are West Ham. West Ham are going to have Europe as well, but Ariola doesn't actually play in that game. So, um, but I know obviously most of the, <laughs> the team will play in that game. So, it is going to be a tough fixture. I can't really see a clean sheet for Ariola to be to be totally honest with you, but hopefully we can rack up some save points and who knows, maybe save a penny or two, um, but hopefully not because I've got Aston Villa's penalty taker on my team. But um, yeah, so hopefully Ariola does get rack up a few save points and then, yeah, if he goes to get a clean sheet, that would be great, but I'm not expecting too much from him. Moreno is definitely an issue. He didn't start against Spurs which makes me think that he will start midweek and start the next Premier League game. Um, Luca Dean did play in the Europe game midweek and he did play against Spurs. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with this. But, um, yeah, well, I guess there's nothing really I can do. I just got to hope he does come on and, and hopefully he even gets a point or two points, to be honest. Um, it's a, yeah, it's just a real shame the way things have kind of turned out because I've had Moreno since my wild card. I've had... Senesi since my wild card, who obviously got injured last week. Um, when I talk about wild card, I mean my first wild card as well. Game week twenty, I played it. Um, I guess it's one of them things that you can't really plan too far ahead in FPL. You have got to kind of take at least probably three fixtures at a time. And yeah, I'm just hoping Moreno can get on and get any sort of points. Doughty's next to him, and um, with Forrest at home, I think a good fixture for him. However, again, I'm not too confident of a of a loot and clean sheet. Um, I think Forrest are not too bad attacking wise. And I think they've got players that can damage um, Luton, like a Langer. Um, they've got Chris Wood playing. I want you if he can get fit. Um, Callum Thomas, Hudson, Adoy, Gibbs, Morgan, Gibbs, White. They have got some nice attacking options. And, and to be honest, I'm not expecting a loot and clean sheet in this one. However, hopefully Doughty can get some attacking returns. He's done very well this season in terms of assists. He's got eight assists and a goal. Um, this season, which is very good considering he plays for Luton. Um, he's only st he started 23 games, so to, to me, that is pretty good. Um, but again, not expecting a clean sheet, just hoping he can get an attack and return. And the same thing with Pedro Porra. I won't go on too much about him because I've just mentioned him, but hoping for attack and returns. I think that Fulham game is a good fixture. I actually don't mind Fulham at the minute. I know they did lose in game week 28, but I don't mind them and the way they play. Um, and I think it will be a tough game for Spurs, but yeah, I, I do fancy them to win that game and score a few goals, and but I just can't see a clean sheet. But hopefully, Poro can get an attacking return, a goal, and then make it worth it. Um, on the bench, we've got obviously all the blank players, so I won't talk about them for the rest of the video. Raya, Gabriel, Palmer, Smith. Obviously, Raya and Gabriel have City away after the break, so it's not not ideal um, to have them on the bench waiting for City away. But for me, um, yeah, I just prefer them to 
to be on the bench rather than um, take him out because you never know what could happen. Um, the option was to take out Estupinan. Um, I could have took out Gabriel instead, but Estupinan has Liverpool away anyway. So for me, um, I'd rather Gabriel because I know he's going to play. Anyway, we'll move on to the midfield. So for the midfield, you've obviously got Madison there, the new uh, my new chance we're in. If it, if I do end up doing that, full him away. Like I said, he's on on set pieces, goals, assists. Um, would like to see a few more goals from him. He's only scored four this season and hopefully he can do that against Fulham. He's actually due a free kick. I don't think he's yet to score one for Spurs. So hopefully this is the game he does do it when I've got him in my FPL team. David Luiz is in there with West Ham away. Again, he's on penalties. Um, I brought him in and he and he hauled straight away, which was great. I'm just hoping he hauls in this game week because this is when I need him the most. I think a lot of free hitters won't have Douglas Luiz. I think they'll probably go for Leon Bailey. So hopefully Louise can do the business as he's done since I brought him in. 15 points against Forrest. I benched him against Luton where he got an assist. Um, and then he obviously blanked against Spurs. But um, I'm hoping that he can get a goal, can get a penalty, can get anything. Um, and yeah, it'll be a massive, massive differential for me. The only thing I'm worried about is John McGinn did get the red card against Spurs. So John McGinn was playing deeper because of Kamara's injury. So now I'm not too sure if Douglas Louise is going to be the person that's going to drop deep. Yeah, it does It does look like that. But again, he's always got penalties, etc. Nine goals, five assists this season for a defensive-ish n- number eight, I'd say, is actually not too bad and, and pretty good, if you ask me. But yeah, he obviously does rely a lot on penalties. And um, yeah, I'm just hoping he can get one. Jared Bowen up next. I uh, did bring him in last game week for that Burnley fixture. He's obviously got Villa at home this game week. Kind of was disappointing, to be honest, in that in that Burnley fixture. I did expect West Ham to to thrash Burnley and get a few goals in that game. They obviously scored two, but they conceded two too. Um, do I think Bowen can do the business in this game? I actually do. Um, obviously, they're both going to have Europe and potentially they both could maybe rotate a few players. I think West Ham are more likely to rotate a few players because Aston Villa are still fighting for that full spot, whereas West Ham... Maybe they're fighting for Conference League, but I think it's going to be a um, bit of a struggle, to be honest, um, especially with how many teams are up there. Spurs, Man United, um, Villa, they're all kind of, I think, secured the spots above West Ham. Um, but for me, yeah, Jared Bowen it has been on fire this season and just hope he can deliver in this game. It's just so many of these players that have done so well this season. It's just this game week, game week 29, is the game week I need them to turn up. I think a lot of people will have Bowen on their free hit team, so... Again, I'm probably not going to be gaining too, too much. But again, I just hope he delivers because I know there's some people that are not going to have Bowen on their free-hit team. And with 14 goals for assists, we've seen he can do it. He can deliver. Um, he's just scored a hat-trick a few game weeks ago in game week 26. And hopefully he can get another one in game week 29. Um, Son, pull him away. Ha- more than happy to play Son. Absolute great, great performance from him. Goal and two assists in that game against Aston Villa. Um, 17 points he ended up getting and 14 goals, eight assists this season, 23 started. Um, for me, that he's just he's just so, so much better playing up front. I've said this so many times on my channel and I know there are some Spurs fans that do say that he's better on the left. I just disagree completely. I think he's so much better through the middle. I think this is what, this is his position from now on. I, I think he's kind of, I don't want to be rude to Son because I love him, but um, I think he's, his time on the left is is over and I think he now he has to be playing through the middle Um, and yeah 14 goals 8 assists this season obviously just got a goal and 2 assists recently got a goal in game week 27 Um, so he's starting to pick up a bit of form and to be honest I've got my captain's armband on him now but I am flip-flopping between him and one of my strikers that I'll talk about next but um, yeah at the moment I'm on Son but to, who knows tomorrow I could be on the, the guy I'm going to talk about next so uh, for me it is either Son as a, as a as an option or um like I said the player I'm going to talk about next but so let's get on to him so now on to the forwards um Ollie Watkins um West Ham away disappointing game I think for Spurs for Ollie Watkins he did kind of get pocketed by uh, Van der Ven and Romero but to be honest I never never doubt Ollie Watkins he's been on fire this season and West Ham away could be a nice fixture for him if West Ham are tired from the Europe, Europe game. Obviously, Villa have a game as well in Europe, but um, I think West Ham have probably got less to play for in the league, so they potentially could rotate against Villa. I can't see it too much, but potentially they could. 
And Oli Watkins, like I said, on fire this season. 16 goals, 15 assists without penalties is just ridiculous. And um, yeah, more than happy to have him with my team. And I think a lot of people, if not everyone, is going to have him on the free hit. Um, Carlton Morris with uh, Forrest at home. Player that I actually don't think a lot of people will have on the free hit. So this could be a, a little differential for me. 11.5% owned he is. And to be honest, I can't see that going up for free hits. I, I don't think many people will be going for him. I think potentially they could be going for a Forest forward or even going five in midfield. Obviously, he blanked, um, as I've mentioned, in game week 28, the first game week. Hopefully, he does do the business against Bournemouth. Um, and Forest at home, I think, is a, is a game that Luton are going to identify as a game they're going to want to win. Forest are a bit up and down, up and down, but they definitely can be beaten. And I think Luton are going to, yeah, like I said, identify that as a game that they can definitely win. And my vice captain, so a player that I've been having my captain's armband on and then taking it off, it is Ivan Tony. I'm a little bit worried about his form. He's blanked four game weeks in a row. Obviously, there have been tough game weeks, though. City away, West Ham away, Chelsea at home, Arsenal away. But this Burnley away fixture... I think he can do the business. Obviously, he's on pens. Um, started nine this season, four goals, one assist. And to be honest, I think he can do the business in this Burnley game. And this is a must, must win game for um, Brentford. They're in serious trouble in the Premier League. They're just they're just kind of lucky. Bit of a, I don't know if this even makes sense, but they're kind of lucky that there's three worse teams than them. And other than that, yeah, if Burnley, Sheffield United and Luton were in the league, they'd be they'd be in serious, serious trouble. Um, and they do really need to win this game. Obviously, um, Tony being back, he did start well, but the tough four games normally he does well in, in the tougher games as well, which is which is a little bit surprising. But um they are Brentford are fifteenth in the league, which it, to me is a bit too close to comfort. They're five points behind Luton and Luton have a game in hand, who Luton are in eighteenth. So if they Luton do win that game against Bournemouth, it could be a bit tricky for Brentford. Um, and they, they will end up being only, yeah, two points from the drop zone. So for me, it is a must-win game. Must, must, must-win game for Brentford. And Tony kind of needs to step up. And that's what I'm relying on by bringing him in my team. Obviously, I did say the captain's armband was on him. But um, I think Son is probably the better captain slightly. I think Spurs are more attacking. I think... Um, he gets an extra point for a goal, gets points for clean sheets. Um, I think Son is probably the better option. Let me know what you think of my transfers and what you think of my team. Leave me a score out of 10, your rating of my team. Smash a like on this video. Like I said, it does help me out a lot. And subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for more FPL content coming very, very soon. And good luck for the game week.